Hello and welcome to day one of human reproduction. This will be our only day where we focus on male reproduction. So today's aim is how does the male reproductive system anatomy allow for reproduction? And anatomy, of course, means the form, right? of the body. And in this case, we're going to be talking about exactly what you probably think we're talking about for the male reproductive system anatomy. And as you may have already noticed on your own notes sheet, we have a diagram of the anatomy that we will be labeling. So let's go ahead and get started. So question number one, one function of the male reproductive system in mammals is to A, produce insulin necessary for sexual reproduction, B, transport eggs necessary for fertilization. So we can definitely already eliminate these two, right? Insulin is necessary uh, for our metabolization of sugar, but it's definitely not part of the male reproductive system function. Uh, transport eggs necessary for fertilization? No, that's the female gamete. Allow for delivery of gametes needed for reproduction, hmm, getting warmer, or provide protection for the developing zygote. And again, that is the function of the female reproductive system, or one of rather, which we will talk about uh, starting tomorrow. So C, allow for the delivery of gametes needed for reproduction, uh, is one function of the male reproductive system. And that delivery of gametes is one of the primary functions, right? Uh, the sperm are created and they need to be delivered as close to the egg as possible. And that is one of the reasons why the male reproductive system anatomy looks the way it does. All right, question number two. The primary function of the human male reproductive system is to provide a site for fertilization. Nope, that happens in the fallopian tubes inside of the female anatomy. B, produce and transport gametes. Ooh, that sounds good to me. C, product and protect and nourish the embryo. Again, we're talking about the female reproductive system there. Or D, prevent urine from leaving the body. Uh-oh. We wouldn't want that, right? And the same uh, tube that allows for the release of urine from the body is what allows for the transportation of gametes from the site of their creation within the testes to uh, the outside world and hopefully uh, to a waiting egg for fertilization is the urethra. So the primary function of the human male reproductive system is to produce and transport gametes. And we'll talk more about that right now. All right. So one is C and two is B. Now we'll go ahead and read a little passage about the male reproductive system. The male reproductive system in humans has three main functions. First, to reproduce the male gametes. which are sperm cells. Second, to deposit the sperm cells it produces inside of the female, right? So to create and transport those gametes. And third, and this one is really an excretory system function, but it is what uh, the male reproductive anatomy does, uh, provides a pathway for the removal of urine from the body. And although that is something that the male reproductive anatomy does, this is an excretory system function, right? The removal of wastes. All right. So sperm cell formation, which remember is the male gamete, occurs in the two testes. And testes is the appropriate plural of testicle, right? One testicle, two testes. And you can see that word testes. You might recognize ooh, the beginning part of that word, right? Just the test as something that we've seen having to do with males before. 
think all the way back to the endocrine system when we talked about the female and male hormones and the male hormone that is responsible for the formation of sperm is testosterone. Right, the male hormone which is produced in the testes because the testes not only function as the site of meiosis for gamete formation, but also as an endocrine system gland. The formation of sperm requires a temperature that is two degrees cooler than the rest of the body. The lower temperature occurs in the testes because they are not located within the body cavity. Instead, the testes are suspended in a sac called the scrotum. The scrotum is an adaptation that has evolved to increase the chances of producing healthy sperm. And why? Again, because the formation of sperm requires a temperature that is two degrees cooler than the rest of the body. So the way that the testes are able to be kept at this lower temperature is thanks to the sac, the scrotum that holds the testes just outside of the body cavity. And this is why if it gets really cold outside, gentlemen, you may have noticed the scrotum can retract closer to the body to keep the testes at that optimum temperature around 96 degrees Fahrenheit right, the optimal temperature for sperm production, about two degrees cooler than typical body temperature, which is around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So inside the testes, cells undergo meiotic cell division that leads to the formation of gametes. So it's happening in the testes, there are cells undergoing the meiotic cell division that leads to the formation of the male gamete or sperm cells. Nowhere else in the male's body does meiotic cell division occur, right? The only other cell division that's happening in our bodies is mitotic. That is cell replacement, growth, and development. But in the testes and in the ovaries in women, we have this special cell division, meiosis, creating haploid gametes. Sperm cells are these highly specialized cells that are able to move. Each sperm cell's function is to try and deliver a single set of chromosomes from the male to an egg cell in the female. Right, and so we may recall that the sperm cells have this little tail at the end, and we're gonna look at the sperm cell anatomy in just a bit, but the sperm cell is able to move to help deliver that important genetic information to the egg. All right, so what are the three major functions of the male reproductive system? Right here from the text, we have to produce gametes, to deliver gametes to the waiting egg. for fertilization. And this is all about getting that genetic information to be passed on, right? You want to reproduce to send your genes on to a future generation. This is why once you get to my age, your parents really want you to have kids because they want to see their genes that live on in you prospering forth in their grandchildren. And then last, and remember, we discussed this one is really an excretory system function, but the urethra in males provides an avenue for both the transportation of gametes and the removal of urine from the body.
Why are the testes located outside the male body cavity? To maintain optimal temperature for sperm production. And remember, just like the production of enzymes and the use of enzymes, most functions inside of our bodies occur in an optimal temperature and pH or pH range. And in this case, the optimal temperature for sperm production is around 96 degrees, which is a little bit cooler than our body temperature. Why do the cells in the testes go through only meiotic cell division? This is the site of sperm production. Lloyd gametes are produced via meiosis. And in the rest of our bodies, we're undergoing mitosis, right? We're undergoing rapid uh, or not so rapid cell replacement via mitosis. But in the testes uh, and in the ovaries, it's slightly different, which we will uh, talk about more when we get to human female reproduction, but they are undergoing this process of meiosis quite rapidly. And uh, each day, males can produce uh, you know, let's get an exact number. Wow, about 1500 sperm per second. And this is what I was gonna say, 20 to 300 million sperm per day. I thought it was in the millions and boy, is that in the millions. That is a lot of sperm, my goodness. So that meiosis is even perhaps more rapid than the cell replacement that's happening in the rest of our bodies. Uh, and this is a very important process for the continuation of the species, right? We need those sperm to produce more humans. What is the function of the scrotum? Again, important for healthy sperm production. The scrotum is the sac that holds the testes. outside the body cavity. To maintain optimal temperature for sperm production. And what sex hormone is produced in the testes? Well, of course, in the testes, we have testosterone. And testosterone is the male sex hormone that we also talked about when we talked about the endocrine system, right? Testosterone, you can see it in the word testes, testosterone, and this is the male sex hormone. 
This regulates the development of secondary sex characteristics in males, and it also regulates sperm production. All right, and now that we've answered those questions about the male reproductive system and read a passage about the male reproductive system, let's label the anatomy. So, all right, we're going to start here sort of behind the business with this dark shaded in area, which is called the prostate. And the prostate is the site of semen production. And semen So semen or seminal fluid is the liquid that suspends the sperm, right? So ejaculate is a liquid that is released from the urethra, the same tube where urine comes out. And that liquid ejaculate contains not only sperm cells, but also this fluid called semen. And that fluid is very important for the actual transportation of the sperm. The sperm wouldn't be able to get as close as they can get to the egg for fertilization without that liquid to help them travel there. So that liquid facilitates the release of sperm from the body and also the transportation of those gametes to get close to the egg for fertilization. because those sperm swim, but only once they've actually been released into the vagina. So they're not swimming until they come out of the urethra. And then next, connected to the prostate, we have here the bladder. And the bladder, again, is not really part of the reproductive system, but it's right down here with all of these and in females as well. It's right down here with all the other reproductive anatomy. So to orient ourselves with this diagram, we also want to include the bladder. And of course, this is the place where urine is held. And this tube that comes down from the bladder is also where urine is released, but that's not what we're going to be tracking the pathway of today. But that tube where urine and semen flow out of is called the urethra. And this tube is longer in males than it is in females, which is one reason why oftentimes males can hold their urine longer than females. This is because that actual extra like five inches of urethra assists in uh, holding in your bladder's urine, uh, which uh, that tube is a lot, lot shorter in females. Uh, because it also doesn't have to transport gametes for females, right? So that urethra, urethra serves a dual function in males. And then, of course, the thing that you probably caught your attention as soon as you saw this diagram, surrounding the urethra, the male sex organ, the penis.
And now let's go out to the sides of this diagram here. for the two testes that serve as both a gland in the endocrine system and also the site of sperm production. So this is both the site of sperm production and the site of testosterone production, which is why the testes are held slightly outside of the body in the scrotum so that that optimal temperature for the production of sperm and testosterone is maintained. And then these tubes leaving the testes, you can see one on each side. And you can see pretty clearly what they do as I trace this diagram. These tubes called the vas deferens transport sperm from the testes to the seminal vesicles. So these tubes are called the vas deferens. So they transport sperm cells from the testes to the seminal vesicles. So what the heck is a seminal vesicle? Well, you can see they're sort of located almost within the bladder. We have the seminal vesicles and the seminal vesicles are also connected to the prostate, which you can't really see in this diagram because the prostate is behind but the seminal vesicles are connected to the prostate because once the semen is produced in the prostate, in the seminal vesicles, the semen is mixed with the sperm to create seminal fluid that contains gametes. And we'll write this with a smaller pen. These are the seminal vesicles. Where sperm is mixed with seminal fluid. Or semen, which is again just the liquid in ejaculate. And that ladies and gentlemen, is the male reproductive anatomy. And we can track here in this little diagram, the pathway of sperm. So we have sperm, which are produced in the testes via meiosis, and we'll follow this one little sperm cell. So that one little sperm cell was now produced in the testes, and he's traveling, he's traveling up through the vas deferens, to make his way into the seminal vesicles where he is mixed with the waiting seminal fluid that will allow for a smooth transition from the seminal vesicles out 
through the urethra during ejaculation to hopefully meet the waiting egg and form a zygote via fertilization if all goes well. So we go from the testes to the vas deferens, the seminal vesicles, out through the urethra into the world. Uh, so those tubes, the vas deferens colored in that sort of peach shade, uh, those tubes are what are actually cut. If you've ever heard of a vasectomy, uh, which if you watch The Office, Michael Scott says like, snip, snap, snip, snap, because it can be reversed. But a vasectomy is a surgical procedure that can be performed on men, which snips the vas deferens. So this allows men to continue to have sex, but they no longer will have sperm contained in their seminal fluid. So they might still produce sperm, but the sperm won't be transported to the seminal vesicles and actually be released in their ejaculate. So they can, uh, you know, have sex without fear of reproduction, but this is not usually something that's recommended for young men to do, but rather done by like older men that are married that don't want to have any more kids. Uh, but really just the interesting thing there is that that vas deferens is what is snipped because it is a, an important part of the pathway of sperm. All right, so we're almost done here. Part C, we're taking a look at sperm anatomy and testosterone. So let's read first about testosterone. The primary male sex hormone, testosterone, is produced in the testes. Its production levels rise during puberty and it is responsible for secondary sex characteristics in males such as facial hair, deepening of the voice box, and development of muscles. So testosterone is the male sex hormone. Regulates sperm production and is responsible for the development of male typical secondary sex characteristics. Thanks, testosterone. And then we have here the actual sperm cell itself. And you can see it has the head here with a large nucleus containing all that genetic information. And much larger than the actual head is this long tail, which is also called a flagella. And that tail moves to facilitate the sperm actually traveling once it has been released up through the cervix into the uterus and up You'll see when we get to female reproductive anatomy, it has to make quite a little journey into the fallopian tubes, which is the actual site of fertilization. And the way it's able to have so much energy to swim and get to that egg for fertilization is because this mid piece here is packed dense with mitochondria. So this question here below says, the human sperm cell has a very powerful tail and its midpiece is packed full of mitochondria. Why would a typical sperm cell need such a powerful tail and a lot of mitochondria? So what is the primary function of the sperm cell? Well, it is to deliver genetic information for reproduction. So the function a sperm cell to deliver or fertilization. So in order to travel to the egg, the 
The sperm cell must exert a lot of energy. by waving its tail. Shout out to Raphael uh, in my fifth period who shared with us in class that in the past, scientists believed that the sperm cell's tail swam like this back and forth, but new research indicates that the sperm cell actually moves in a swirling like fashion. And that's how it gets to where it wants to go. Uh, the motility or how much a sperm cell moves is actually very important for the reproductive viability of the individual. So if your sperm cells aren't swimming, aren't doing what they need to do, perhaps they don't have enough mitochondria, perhaps there's some other problem, this decreases your likelihood of being able to reproduce because in order to actually deliver your genetic information to an egg, the sperm cell has to be able to get there by waving its tail to swim. This is usually the verb we use and reach the egg. mitochondria and many mitochondria, right? Provide energy to this cell. To power the cell in its efforts. Let's call it a haploid cell. I'm going all the way back to unit two. Hopefully we don't forget that the mitochondria sort of this bean shape looking thing is the powerhouse of the cell. Which I don't know if this meme still exists but I used to see it all the time. Like, how do I do my taxes? Never fear, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So sorry, I'm not your math teacher, but I will teach you that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, giving energy in the form of ATP via cellular respiration to power our body cells and allow us to live. Thanks, mitochondria. All right, so today's aim was how does the male reproductive system anatomy allow for reproduction? And we discussed the primary function of the human male reproductive system, which is to produce and transport gametes. We read a little bit about the male reproductive system and then answered some close reading questions. Then we labeled the diagram of the male reproductive anatomy, followed the pathway of sperm, and talked a little bit about testosterone, sperm anatomy, and why sperm cells have so many mitochondria. I hope you learned something today. Have a super fantastic day, and I'll see you all next week on Zoom. Bye, guys.